Hello, on this edition of Commuter Connections, we'll be joined by Maryland Transportation Secretary Pete Ron and Maryland Transit Administrator Paul Comfort to discuss an exciting new transit system coming to Baltimore. It's called Baltimore Link. We'll show you how this new system will improve transit services for hundreds of thousands of Baltimore area residents who rely on public transportation each day. We'll also be joined by a founding member of Transit Choices and hear what he has to say about Baltimore Link. All right here. MTA TV, the recipient of a 2015 Tele Award for Television Excellence. Governor Hogan, Transportation Secretary Pete Ron, and Transit Administrator Paul Comfort recently announced plans to completely transform Baltimore's broken transit system. The announcement was made at a press event at West Baltimore Mark train station, and MTA Commuter Connections was there. Governor Larry Hogan, Maryland Transportation Secretary Pete Ron, and MTA Administrator Paul Comfort were joined by other public officials, media, and members of the public at the West Baltimore Mark Rail Station in October for the announcement of the governor's plan for a $135 million investment to transform and improve transit in the Baltimore area. The plan we are unveiling today begins immediately, and the entire plan could be fully implemented by June of 2017. The plan to connect Baltimore will create an interconnected transit system known as Baltimore Link. The multi-phase plan includes redesigning the entire local and express bus systems throughout Baltimore and adding 12 new high-frequency color-coded bus routes that improve connections to jobs and other transit modes. The backbone of this comprehensive master plan consists of 12 new City Link routes, which are specifically designed to integrate with other modes of transit. Local officials and other state officials also attended the press event and shared their thoughts on Baltimore Link. We want people to be able to get to the jobs from Amazon to Johns Hopkins Bay View Medical Center. It is very important. We want to be a first class city. Investment is essential. Baltimore is filled with many qualified workers who are either unemployed or underemployed. The plan that Governor Hogan is unveiling is a great step toward providing Baltimore with a first-class bus system capable of moving our residents to job opportunities. The MTA will immediately begin an extensive public outreach effort to educate citizens on the elements of the new plan and seek their feedback and input. Public outreach efforts will continue in advance of the June 2017 launch of the new Baltimore bus service, CityLink, and in advance of the launch of the new suburb-to-suburb -suburb express bus link in June 2016. Baltimore Link will certainly make the difference in connecting Baltimore residents to growing job markets in the area and strategically link all Baltimore transit modes for customer convenience and better service. Joining us with a look at the new Baltimore Link system is Maryland Department of Transportation Secretary Pete Ron. Hi, Pete. Welcome to our program. Hi, Sandy. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you. And actually, this is your first time it is. here at Commuter Connection. So welcome again. Why don't we start off, you tell me a little bit about yourself and your background. Well, you know, I first off, I love transportation of all types, mm -hmm. and so I'm pretty boring when you know most people talk to me. Mm -hmm. uh, my background is I, I spent eight years as the Secretary of Transportation, first in New Mexico, okay. and then I had returned to the private sector, and then I was recruited to the Missouri DOT, oh, okay. spent as their, their director, same job, different title, and mm -hmm. spent almost six years there and then uh, returned to New Mexico and served as chairman of the state's Transportation Commission for four years until Governor Hogan's team reached out and said, would I be interested in coming to Maryland? And I said, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> this is this, you know, what an opportunity here because this is the only state that has 
all transportation under mm -hmm. one department. And the, you know, the challenge is just too great for me to pass up. Right, it's an awesome opportunity. So as Secretary of Transportation, what's, what's your vision for Maryland, for Maryland Transportation? Well, I, I believe we've got great opportunities, but we also have great responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And so those things mm -hmm. always go together. Uh, but um, he, frankly, Maryland has a huge congestion problem. You know, Washington, D.C. has graduated into being the, the most congested region in the country, mm -hmm. edging out Los Angeles, which is quite an achievement. Mm -hmm. And Baltimore is the fifth most congested, and that congestion is spreading more and more uh, across the state. And so we need to be doing something about it. We're making some major investments in transit mm -hmm. to try to offset some of that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also looking at how can we use the funds that we have available to us from the Transportation Trust Fund more efficiently so that we can get more out of those dollars and deliver more to the citizens. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is creating all the congestion? Uh, uh, the congestion is uh, really successful business and economy to a large extent. Okay. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll find the correlation between congestion mm -hmm. and, and a, a growing economy. Okay. Are, that correlation is actually pretty close. And so, you know, there are economists who will tell you the lack of congestion will generally indicate your economy is not doing too well. Okay. And I can tell you that I have, in fact, been to Detroit during the dark years uh, when, you know, the, the city was just headed down and you know, nine o'clock in the morning, you could walk across any major street downtown mm -hmm. with, without much concern about traffic. And so mm -hmm. you, you can see that. However, that's not an excuse for us to put up with congestion. Mm -hmm. We have to make investments. We are making uh, you know, major investments. When you consider the money that's going into the Purple Line and now Baltimore Link, we, mm -hmm. we are, using tools available to us to reduce congestion as we mm -hmm. can on that side of the, of the house. And, and we need to look at good use of highway dollars mm -hmm. so that we can improve the flow of traffic uh, where it exists as well. Oh, okay, so now you mentioned the, um, you know, the transit plan, Baltimore Link. I know that recently, you know, you you probably met with some of the citizens of Baltimore, some of the stakeholders, elected officials, and you've had meetings to hear what their concerns were about transit, particularly in Baltimore. What have you learned from some of those meetings? Well, you know, the department has been engaged with the citizens of Baltimore now literally for three and a half years that I'm aware of in trying to find out what it is that citizens would like out of a transit system. And I'm stressing the word system. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, literally well over a thousand people provided input into what they think a transit system should, should actually do. Mm -hmm. And so taking that mm -hmm. uh, information as well as the, um, as well as data, which says this is where people live, this is where people work, mm -hmm. and how do we connect those, and how do we connect them in a way that that's in line with the public's expectations. And I believe that's what Baltimore Link has done, is it's, it's taken into consideration what the, what the people have told us they want, mm -hmm. and it's also using good data to provide a transformative transportation system. Okay, awesome, thank you. Now coming up next, we'll speak with Maryland Transit Administrator Paul Comfort for a look at implementing this exciting new transit system in Baltimore. Stay with us. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt.
In our previous segment, Maryland Transportation Secretary Pete Ron gave us the big picture view of the new transit system, Baltimore Link. Now we're joined by the person who will make all of this a reality for transit riders in Baltimore. He's MTA Administrator Paul Comfort. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back. So now as MTA Administrator, give us a little bit of an idea of your vision for the MTA. Uh, sure, great, thanks. So. Um, you know, I came to the MTA in May, so I've been here about five months, and I come with a strong background in transit from across America, as well as running local governments. I ran two local governments here in Maryland, in Charles County and Queen Anne's County. And what I wanted to do is take the MTA kind of into the 21st century. Uh, really, our whole transit system, in my opinion, is kind of stuck in the 80s, uh, like Back to the Future uh, week that we just had recently. And so we really needed to come up with the technology. We don't, you know, we didn't have good technology where people can look at their phone and see when the next bus is going to be here. The route system was antiquated, built on years, 50 years. I was talking to one of our employees the other day who'd been here 45 years, and he confirmed to me, you know, most of these routes were in place when he started working here 45 years ago. So we really wanted to modernize and make a transit system that's worthy of a great city like like Baltimore. So that's what we did. We first focused on internally the agency. There's a lot of internal reforms that we've been doing inside the agency to make it more efficient. And the, and the way to do it is I think we set up, uh, I set up what I call the North Stars of the agency, which are that everything we do has to focus on number one, safety. We want to be a safe system, then we want to be efficient, and we want to be reliable. And do all of that with world-class customer service. So all of our training of our employees, all of our key performance indicators, all flow down from that. And so um, while we're working on reforming the inside of MTA to make it focused on those goals, we are creating uh, what we call key performance indicators or KPIs, kind of like the state stat system or the city stat where you have key measurements that the managers are held accountable to hit, such as on-time performance, which people want to have the bus there on time. And so we worked internally and now this new product, the Baltimore Link product, to really connect Baltimore and all the modes is our external product that we're creating that again focuses on safety, efficiency, reliability, and customer service. Okay, so when we talk about the Baltimore Link system, Tell me how exactly, I know we touched on some of it about, right. this, about the um, system and how it's going to work, but how do you see it really carrying out your vision? That's great. So, um, so first is safety, right? So mm -hmm. uh, this year I've been able to add 10 new police officers to the MTA police force, and I got uh, budget money from the $135 million that, to help fund 10 additional police officers. So they will have an expanded police presence uh, out on the street, in the vehicles, in the stations. Uh, then on the side of efficiency, we want to make sure that the system is running where people want to go today. Mm -hmm. That's something we didn't talk about last time. Is, as part of this analysis, we took two years of data that was already gathered. I was delivered a treasure trove of data with something called the Bus Network Improvement Project. Mm -hmm. And it looked at every bus route in the system, who got on and who got off at each stop and what time of the day. It, we just, it was wonderful to have all that when I got here. So we mined that data as well as information from the Maryland Department of Planning where we looked at where the jobs are, where people want to go today. And so what we did is, in addition to designing these routes to interlink, we also designed them to go where the jobs are today. Now, as Kirby okay. likes to tell me, Kirby Fowler, there's 125,000 jobs downtown, and that's true. We definitely still have strong service in the downtown city. But now we also have expanded service to Columbia, mm -hmm. new service going up to Aberdeen, uh, additional light rail service, additional mark bike car that, we, mm -hmm. that we're starting mm -hmm. uh, now. And so lots of other different modes involved in creating efficiency is getting people where they want to go today, and finally, reliability. So. The number one complaint I hear from folks is your buses aren't on time. They don't get to the stop on time, and they're too long of a ride. You right. know, it's supposed to be a 30-minute ride, it ends up being an hour-long ride. Mm -hmm. And so this route system, combined with the city working with us to do uh, TSP, Transit Signal Priority, where we have, we have identified 200 intersections. I've got $11 million in the budget out of that 135 to put in TSP at 200 intersections, where our bus, when it comes up to a traffic signal, it'll hold the light for them for five or six more seconds, mm -hmm. and they can get through. Or if the light's already red, it'll make it turn green faster. They did this in Keep L.A. The bus is moving. They did it in L.A. and it improved transit travel time by 25 percent. Magnificent. And then if the city can help us with bus-only lanes, uh, for instance, on Lombard and Pratt, and we'll help. We got money in our budget to do to help them with that. 
That'll help our vehicles get through, plus with that light, now we'll have more reliability, as well as a route system and a time system that's set up for what's reality. So I think that people are going to be, see a much more reliable transit system, and the whole thing's being done with customer service. Okay, and again, tell us when it's going to be implemented. So it's implemented in three phases. Uh, the first phase is being done this month, where we're adding the extra quick bus 40 service, and then we'll have lots of hearings, and then in June of 16, we'll do the express routes, and then the next January, we'll do new commuter routes. And then finally, June of 2017, we'll pull the Band-Aid off, and the entire bus system, the route system, will change overnight for the city of Baltimore. Okay, and just really quick, the bus system, what are we calling that? It's the City Link city is the link. 12 colored routes. Okay. Then Local Link are the buses out in the community, and Express Link are the express buses. Okay, and The awesome. overall program is called Baltimore Link. Okay, awesome. So we have some exciting things coming to Baltimore. Absolutely. Great. So thank you so much. And um, where can we can get, get more information? We have tons of information on our website, mta.maryland.gov. There's a banner. You can click on it. We've got maps and graphs. We've, we want people to get involved. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Paul. So again, if you want more information, mta.maryland.gov. Click on the Baltimore Link banner you for more it. details. Now coming up next, a look at how the new system, Baltimore Link, fits into the governor's overall vision for public transportation in Maryland. Stay with us. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Let's switch to Energy Star light bulbs and stop burning through cash. Saving energy saves you money. We're pleased in this segment to be joined by Maryland Transportation Secretary Pete Ron and MTA Administrator Paul Comfort for a somewhat larger view of how the new Baltimore Link system fits into the governor's vision for transit in and around Baltimore. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Let's jump right in. There was a huge announcement last week um, talking about the governor's $135 million transit improvement plan. Tell us a little bit about that announcement and the event. Uh, the event was amazing. And, you know, starting off with the large screen that showed what a transit way could look like in Baltimore. And it, it just, to me, it was very exciting to think that we could take a common street and turn it into such an appealing location for economic development, for gatherings of, of where people, where they just want to be, and really also improving the flow of, of the buses within our system. That was exciting. We also had the new wraps on buses announcing that this program, you know, the project, actually more than a project, this is a program of improving transit mm -hmm. is uh, is you know it, it is going to happen and it's going to happen very quickly yeah, I thought the event itself uh, befitted the size of what we're doing. So we did a big event, probably one of the biggest events that this administration has done when they've announced something big and so because the program that we're talking about, that Secretary Ron just talked about, is transformative uh, for how people will get around the Baltimore region. And so we did a big event that had um, aspects from each of our modes. As you know, the MTA operates not just bus, but light rail, mark, and metro, and mobility. And we had vehicles there, and, and bicycle racks, and we had folks, we had a zip car because we're, we're going to be doing things like that around our, so it, it represented all the changes that we're bringing to our system through this Baltimore Link program, which links together all our modes and other uh, last mile things like, like bicycles. Okay, now you touch on that a little bit. Tell me a little bit, because I know this plan has several elements to it. Well, Sandy, can I also just add one more piece of information sure. to mm -hmm. your previous question, which was, this was a big event because the governor wanted mm -hmm. a big event. Mm -hmm. He saw what this is going to do for the city. He saw how transformative it was going to be. And so when he saw this and we were setting up this announcement, he said, I want a big announcement because this is a big deal for the city of Baltimore. Now, you know, I, I do want to piggyback on that a little bit. Now, this was the governor's first appearance since his last chemotherapy treatment, right? Yes. So what do you think, what kind of message do you think that sends, you know, that he was, you know, here for this event on this topic, you know, for this city? You know, what, what do you think that message was for the citizens of Baltimore? Well, I think that's indicative of just how supportive he is of the city. And, and also how important he thinks this is to, this, to the future of the city. 
And so, you know, the governor had said he, he's not at 100% yet because you know, six, mm -hmm. you know, six sessions mm -hmm. of chemotherapy just, you, you know, really knocks the wind out of you. And yet he committed to be there for this. And mm -hmm. I, a lot. I, I just, he cares about the city of Baltimore. That's great. And it's an important system that's going into place, right? So I know we were going to talk, touch on some of the elements of that system. When Secretary Ron appointed me to this position back in May, and I talked to him and the governor about it, they said, Paul, take a look at what's going on there. And we don't think it's really working that well. <laughs> we need to make some major adjustments. Mm -hmm. And so uh, upon, you know, we did an analysis and it definitely, uh, our bus route system has, uh, I like the way Pete said it in the announcement, it's years of layered inefficiencies on top of each other bus stops and routes that really weren't designed to interlink effectively with all the modes that are in the city. We have a healthy rail infrastructure in the city. We've got mark lines coming through the city, we've got light rail, and we've got a subway, but the bus system is the way to interconnect all of them, and it never really effectively did. So that's the base of what we're doing. That's why it's called Baltimore Link. It's linking all the different modes in the city into one transit system. It's hubs and spokes. So a bus will come into the middle of the city, drop off at a hub where there's also a light rail or a Mark or a Metro or other bus city link routes and then it'll be a time transfer where then you can get onto another mode and with one transfer get to anywhere on those 12 city link routes or light rail or Metro so it really changes the paradigm for how we run the city transit service to make well, that it sounds huge and, and, and the city link residents. routes are going on 10 minute headways which means you don't need a schedule you just stand at one of our color coded this is one of his big things he told me Paul I want it to be easy to use and make it colorful mm -hmm. and so we made it colored routes like the DC system and um, you can just stand at a bus stop and a bus will be there within 10 minutes well, awesome. see, and I think the other piece the, the 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 benefit of these colored routes is that anyone who comes to Baltimore mm -hmm. can in fact use our bus system because they will know how to get where they want to go. And we'd had a number of conversations as this was being developed. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people, when they're told, you know, to use an existing system, it's, well, you get on the 119 over to the 62 and you get off mm -hmm. here and you take the whatever. And it's so confusing to most people. people don't use the bus system, even those people who actually reside in Baltimore, because it's it's not an easy system to understand the way it is currently. So and are you so going to use signage or do something? The colors, right? Mm -hmm. The colors are represent lines, okay. and so when you, you can easily look at a map, just as you do with the Washington Metro, yes. and you mm -hmm. can see, for instance, instance that you could take the the Navy line over to uh, the Harbor East area. You don't need to know what bus number that is. Oh, okay. You can simply, by looking at a map, say, oh, this is how I get there. So it, it's going to be much easier for residents of Baltimore to use, as well as it's going to be easy for people who come here from out of town mm -hmm. to be able to, to get around and take advantage of a great transit system. A much more user-friendly system. That They've done awesome. a remarkable job and putting together this system. And I keep, I always stress the term yeah. system is that mm -hmm. Baltimore Link will mean that we actually have a transit system mm -hmm. for Baltimore. When do we expect right now that this plan will be fully implemented? Okay. June 2017. Awesome. So it's not long. Mm -hmm. And I would love to have the opportunity to explain that the $135 million cost of this is actually, that's the additional cost on top of the $1.4 billion in capital investments that are scheduled for the city. So this is not a $135 million plan. This is a $1.535 billion plan. Wow. A so there, this it, this represents a, a huge investment in mm -hmm. Baltimore, and as I say, the 135 million that was talked about mm -hmm. is just in addition to what was already being planned for the city. That's good to know. So we have some exciting news coming for the city of Baltimore. Good things to look forward to. We do. Thank mm -hmm. you both. Mm -hmm. Now coming up, we'll be joined by one of the leading transit advocacy groups in the area for a look at how it views this new transit system for Baltimore. That's next, stay with us.
People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today, I'm just an aluminum can, but one day, I could be a stadium. The new Baltimore Link system will provide transit riders the safe, efficient, and reliable public transportation they deserve by effectively linking each transit mode for a better and more cohesive commute. Joining us with his view on the new transit system coming to Baltimore is a founding member of one of the area's leading transit advocacy groups. We welcome Transit Choices, Jimmy Rouse, to Commuter Connections. Thank you. Welcome, Jimmy. It's good to have you on our show. Well, thank you. Give us a little bit of information about Transit Choices and its so mission. So what Transit Choices is, is a coalition of business groups, universities, cultural institutions, environmental groups, mm -hmm. community groups, uh, transportation planners, mm -hmm. developers, entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, and, in, and concerned individuals who came together, joined by the, the vision of how we bring a good transit system, a great transit system to Baltimore, which clearly it does not have now. I, I, my own background is I owned a restaurant on Charles Street for years from 1981 to 1998, oh, okay. Louis Bookstore Cafe. Mm -hmm. and, um, in that position, I became president of the Charles Street Merchants Association. And we started lobbying for a streetcar to come up Charles Street from the harbor because Schaefer ran a, a rubber wheel trolley. And I immediately saw the difference in business at Louis from having that connection between the harbor and Mount okay. Vernon. Mm -hmm. So as part of, I got involved and formed a broader group called Charles Street Development Corporation. And one of our goals was to link Charles Street with permanent transit because okay. when Mayor Schmoke came in, that trolley got discontinued. What was needed was clearly more than streetcars. There was no unified vision for what transit should be in the city. Right. And so we set out to get all these groups around a vision. Okay, now I know you were involved with the announcement that was made recently with the governor right. and with Secretary Transit, Transportation Secretary Ron and talking about this new improvement plan for Baltimore. Right, the link. So Baltimore. what are your thoughts about Baltimore Link? So, one, I applaud the bold and creative approach to solving Baltimore's transit system. And two, most importantly, we share the same values. Mm -hmm. We want a transit system that's clean and safe, that it's fast and frequent along core routes, right. that um, integrates with all the other transit systems like light rail, water taxi, circulator, marked trains. We want an integrated transit system. We share those values. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, the most important thing is we want to connect the citizens in East and West Baltimore to job opportunities. That's what, um, with the Baltimore Link system and with CityLink, the colored bus route, that will help with that problem as far as being with the on-time reliability, running more frequently and things like that. So hopefully it'll address a lot of those problems that we currently have in the city. Right, mm -hmm. so that's, that's, that's where we share those values with the this, this system. Okay. Now it's a work in progress. It's not mm -hmm. set in stone. Okay. We need, it's not gonna be implemented until June 2017. Right. So between now and then we need to work and there needs to, they're going to collect citizen input. Right, there will be public meetings, right. so we'll get some more input. That's great. So we're going to work to make it. I, I'll tell you one thing. The people at the MTA who, who hatched the system, the people that I met working there, they are dedicated to making Baltimore's transit a really good system. Mm -hmm. They have the right motivation. They're bright people. I trust what they're doing, you know. I trust how they think. And uh, so we want to work with them. We want to work cooperatively. Okay, and I'm sure they look forward to working with you and having your input, and hopefully we'll be hearing from others with the public meetings that will be coming up soon. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. That brings us to the end of another Commuter Connections program. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>